I wasn't okay. But at the same time, I was like, I'm going to be okay. Mm-hmm. You know, and if, if we get to back together, we do. If we don't, we don't. But I understood, like, that was the greatest breakup ever because I understood that, oh, this if I say I want this person for the rest of my life, I need to show it. So, mm-hmm. like I said, date nights, um, just keeping her feeling special. Like, like they always say, you date them once, you got to date them forever. Mm-hmm. Everything you did to get them, that's what you got to do to keep them. <laughs> Yo, what's poppin'? You already know what time it is. Your boy, Mr. J Hill. J Hill is in the building. J Hill Podcast. Oh, man, special guest. I always say this when I go back home, but I'm, I'm going to get used to going back home because that's what we doing, man. We put niggas on when we get on. That's what real niggas do. J Otto is in the building. Yes, what up, dog? Yes, sir. What it do, man? All is well. Hey, Can't man, complain. Love, man. God doing? is good. God yes, is good, brother. All the time. Yo, so, um, man, I don't even know what this, where to start at. First of all, how, how are you? How was your mental? Give me a, a mental check in, one that's to a, ten. That's a great question, man. I would say I'm definitely at a nine. You know, you have them days, especially being a black man in America. But I would definitely say I'm at a nine. I feel good, feel blessed. Family's mm. good. Family's healthy. Um, life is good. I really can't complain. So I would say mental is definitely at a nine. Mm. You know, you have them days where, you know, it feels a little dark sometimes. But you quickly snap out of it when you realize how blessed and grateful you are. When the last time you had one of them days when it felt dark? <sighs> Probably last week. Right yeah. last week, I ran because sometimes you know I wake up and um I think one thing that I realized I got all that mindset, but you still have the moments like you know, even when you're doing great, sometimes you think you know when you see a peer doing great things, sometimes you can have that factor where it's like ah, I can do more than what that person's doing. It's not a hate thing, it's not a jealousy thing, but it's like a human That's, thing. Thank it's you for thing. talking about it's it because thing. people always scared to talk about yes. that mm-hmm. that instant like you know like. Jealousy feeling, envious yeah. feeling, it's okay. It, yeah. I feel like these are human emotions. Mm. Mm-hmm. I feel like, me personally, I feel like as long as you check those feelings mm-hmm. at, the door, at the door, then it's okay. Mm-hmm. Now, when you when you move on these emotions, that's when it's a problem. Mm-hmm. That's just my personal opinion. A lot yeah. of people are scared to talk about that jealousy side, yeah. right? Because they they just don't know how to. They hear it and they're like jealousy, jealousy. Nah. Like, bro, we all feel it sometimes. <laughs> yeah, like sometimes you. you see your your homie, it's like fuck. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I can like, do that too. I can do more, you know. But it's like you, like you said, you check yourself at the door. You understand, and you think about your own life. You recap your own life. Oh, I'm blessed. I'm mm-hmm. doing this. I'm doing that. That's like you said. It's a smack in God's face mm. by not being grateful, not showing God. You move into my life too. So no cap. Yeah, you know what I do in old times. Sometimes, mm-hmm. sometimes I double down on the love. Mm. Like let's say if like let's say me and you close right, and, and, and something happened, and I don't know if I, I'm just watching. I'm just you know I'm not I'm not on my on my thing or whatever, like some people will say, and I'm looking at you and you doing good. If I feel something, I'll give you a shout out. Mm. I'll text you, yo, you doing good. I double down on the love to to, to block to block that negativity mm. out because God, just like God is real, the yeah. devil is real, mm. right? So a lot of times people just be scared to acknowledge that we got some shit with us. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's human. You feel me? So like sometimes when those situations happen, I double down on the good. That's true. Like That's you know true. what? If I got a negative, I thought I'm like you know what. Man, look at the positive. Mm, it's too much. It's too much positive going on. Too much. Yo, speaking of those human emotions, man, you've been doing this for years. I mean, like ten plus at this mm, point. Yep. Uh, so I, I started um 2010. Mm-hmm. I started making music. You know, just playing around with it, seeing what I want to do. I took it serious in 2011. So from 2011 to 2015, I, I built a strong following for that, and then I took a break. Mm-hmm. From 2015 to 2019, early 19, I took a break. Came back in 19. Um, felt good, you know. My mental wasn't the best. We just talking about that too as well. Like I feel like I took that break because um, a lot of broken promises, especially being a young artist, when you start making music at eighteen, nineteen, you deal with a lot of business things more than you actually imagine, you know. So I feel like I was at a moment where it's like I'm dealing with a bad manager. I'm dealing with a bad deal going wrong. Somebody's telling me I'm going on this big network and it doesn't fall through. So you're nineteen, twenty. Mm-hmm. That's heartbreakers right there, you know. And you know you're at a point where it's like you don't realize speaking too soon can block your own blessings. Mm. So I was at a, at that time I used to be like, oh, I'm about to get on this. Tell my friends, and you don't get on it. You like, they like, what happened? I'm like, ah, didn't happen, you know. So I think that was a big uh, journey in my life, just realizing that. Um, I had to take a break. A lot of people, they'll just keep going. But I was going to run myself to the ground. Mm-hmm. Like, just dealing with that, like I said, the uh, broken promises, manager, everything like that. So I took that break. 2015 and early 2019, I came back and just started going crazy. Hit the ground running. Yeah. And how, back. How do you feel like your legacy is perceived back home? Back, oh, it's love, man. Mm-hmm. When we when we do things, I'm forever grateful for my support system. Like, And it's 
it's from the mud. It's not one of those systems where I got a co-sign from a celebrity, somebody put me on. Now it's from the mud, and you know all about that. So yeah, sure. I feel like my following, it's like a mini cult following on the low because like we have shows, video shoots, and it's all there. Uh, shows, video shoots, um, anything like anything, anything J Auto related, they pop out. You know what it, I think? Mm -hmm. I fuck with. I fuck with. Like you said, it's yeah. all there, yeah. right? Even like when I'm doing my research and shit, I see interviews from 10 years ago, 11 mm -hmm. years ago, right? And I'm like, bro, this is so dope. Yeah. A lot of people try to get that stuff removed, but for you, it's like it stays there and it's such a nostalgia around it because mm -hmm. it's like, bro, damn, like look at this guy. Now I would have <laughs> never, I would have never thought <laughs> that this was him. Not, like, not in a million years. Damn. So during that break, what were some of the things that you you decided to do when you took that break? Man, music? you know, you know, the break exposed a lot of the fake love mm. because I would say that because when I was, you know, when you're hot. Everyone's everyone loves you. Everyone loves you when you hot. You know, it's easy. It's a fact. It's a fact. You're getting this girl. You're talking to that person. You're talking to this. You're getting that love. So when you get a little cold and isolated, you start seeing who's there for you. Mm -hmm. So I realized I was like, certain people weren't hitting me up no more. So I wouldn't talk to this person like I used to. This certain person won't talk to me. I'm like, dang, mm -hmm. that wasn't that wasn't a friend. That wasn't a homie. That was somebody that was using me for my wave, you know? Mm -hmm. So when I took that setback, I took that moment, I was like, all right. I'm not making no music. I'm chilling. I'm not doing nothing. I got to be Jeff, not Jay Otto. I got to be Jeff. I got to be normal. I got to see who was there for me. And it was the most beautiful thing I ever say because that's what everybody needs. You know, it's easy to be there for everyone when they hot. But when you cold and you ain't getting no bookings, you ain't nobody talking to you, <laughs> you see them real friends, man. It's crazy because, like, you you speak on how, how we need the break, mm -hmm. right? And you took that break and you was able to like, you know, tap into yourself for real. And you saw who was exposed to fake from the real. Yeah. During that time, what do you think was the most the most pivotal part in your life to help you to make you continue to, to your career? I from think, the break to starting again in twenty nineteen. I think the most pivotal part uh from coming back, you're saying, like coming back. Yeah, just in that during that break to make you even want to continue to keep going. So it's funny because 2017, I, t I thought I was ready. I wasn't. 2018, I thought I was ready. I wasn't. How did you know you wasn't, though? I felt it. Like, it was like, you you know, this goes back to what I was saying with the peers. You know, you see your peers. It's like, oh, I can do what that person is doing, too. But I came in a place in 2019 early. I was like, I'm not worried about nobody got going on. I'm worried about Jay Otto. So I came to afraid. I don't care how that person's doing. If they hot, they, they doing this. I'm in a place where Jay Otto can worry about Jay Otto. So mm. when 2019 came around... I was like, I'm dropping. I said, I feel it. I didn't tell no one, but I was like, it's about to be my moment. So it's crazy how you brought that up too. So I didn't know how I wanted to drop because you know you take a three, four year break, you got to come back strong. You got you can't just drop a song and then and but before it. we get to you dropping oh. the song, right? <laughs> no, no, before we get there, because yeah. I'm I'm trying to tap into the mental space, yeah. right? Were you like at an all time high financially? Mm -hmm. Were you like in in the best space you ever been? When it comes to your mental space, to be like, you know what, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Where were you at in your life at that moment? In top of 2019, like you just said, I felt like I was at at peace with, like, I had my circle. I had the love. Everybody, I saw who was there for me. So that three years, you got to see everybody's true colors. So I think I finally got to that moment where I was like, I'm ready to come back. I feel what it. was it that gave you that peace, though? What, what moment was it that, how did you know, like, this is my peace? How did you know <sighs> That's that? That's a great question. How did I know? That... <sighs> I don't, I don't know if there was an exact moment that hit me. It might have mm. been multiple moments. I think it was just kind of like this blessing might have been happening. Um, this might have happened. But I would say the ultimate moment I could really think of was um, I would probably say after skydiving. Um, mm. So I actually ended up going skydiving in um, 2019 for my birthday. It's crazy because it was just regular skydiving. You know, my birthday, having fun. And I went up there, um, did everything, and I felt crazy. Like, I felt the wind, you know, everything was going crazy. I was like, so I told my lady, I was like, the pictures look crazy. She's like, what do you mean? The pictures look, I saw it like, the pictures look crazy. So when I flew, when I came back down, I saw the photos, I was like, she was like, these are viral worthy. These are viral photos. Mm. So when I posted those photos, what happened? It went viral. Mm. It literally went viral. I was Shave Room, Fox 5, ABC, everything you can name, picked up them photos, the photos. So that was my moment. And I would not say that that wasn't a mistake. That was something that God created that big platform for me. So I flipped the viral moment, dropped the song, mm. dropped the song. And it was a great song. Dropped the song, flipped it from those skydiver interviews to just straight 
uh, mu- made a music interview. So ABC would interview me for a, a, a skydiving. I'd be like, oh, by the way, I make music. Boom. So it was that literally that perfect platform to switch in and it literally went from skydiving to dropping the video on BET for the first time. Mm. So that flip was crazy. And it was nobody but the man above. I don't okay. care. No one tell me it was God. God ordained. God handled that for me because that was the pr- I, I knew. Like I said, I didn't know how I wanted to drop, but I wanted to drop. And that was my platform. I mean, you literally dropped out the sky. Literally (laughs) dropped out the sky. (laughs) Literally, literally. So it's crazy that you, uh, you kind of like seize that moment, right? A lot of people they say success is when opportunity preparation meets uh, opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they say, and it's crazy because you was already prepared. You already did the music and shit like that, right? So like now you had this opportunity because like yo, I got the spotlight on me. Tell you. What what other time than now, right? Yes. Like it was crazy. It's perfect time. It's God. Like you said, it's literally if you put. Everything together, you look back, it was literally the stars aligned. It was mm-hmm. God ordained. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Um, so now it's just like, where is it now? Oh <laughs> we've been it look crazy. Yeah, like, we literally so from 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 2019 to 2022, yeah. where we at? Man, so it's crazy because we've put in so much work. Obviously, COVID happened, so 2020 was a little slower than we all wanted it to be. But 2019, we were hot. 2020, we were hot. 2021, we were hot. 2022, we have a project out, album out. Everything is on above. I'm performing in Afrotrella later in the year. That's mm-hmm. an African. I'm first time ever performing in Africa. It's a blessing. Spoken to existence in July. It happened. I got that call in October. So that's God ordained again. Of course. And then... um. I got another show that I'm doing top of the year, headlining for the first time at Union Stage. So everything is literally lining up in my favor. Like, and everyone that knows me personally, they know Jeff put in that work. Now it's crazy yeah. because um, somebody had hit me about you, mm-hmm. and they was like, um, they was said your name, and I'm like, man, who is this guy? <laughs> and they, that's that's how they explained you. Mm-hmm. They was like, bro, I don't know how to explain it, but like this nigga been around for a minute working. Like, and I'm like, okay, I can't be mad at that. <laughs> I hope somebody say that about me. Literally, literally. They literally was like, man, he a singer, like he does like Afro beats, but it's like, bro, like dude been grinding. Like, he, and I think they was like, man, it's, it's dope to see that he's like popping off now, but yeah. he's been doing this for been, a minute. Been moving, bro. It's, I've been moving. And the thing is, people don't understand, like, like when we, you know, when we get to where we want to get to, there's some people, there's people that's going to be like, ah, oh, how'd they get there? The like we said, we keep the history online. You're gonna see how we grew every year organically. Mm-hmm. How we didn't worry about a handout. We didn't we didn't go chase anyone. Like, hey, you need to work with us. We got it from the mud. We're still getting it from the mud, and we will forever get it from the mud wherever we go. Yo, your story is kind of different than traditional people in your culture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's crazy because like you like your your mom's did music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she did. She did it in Ghana, yeah. Mm-hmm. right? Yeah, you did your homework. Like, usually, <laughs> like, like, when you, like, you know, like, I speak with people from the African culture. Like, every, of course, is that, that stereotype. Mm-hmm. All your parents want you to be a doctor. <laughs> look, like, doctor it's like look. engineers. <laughs> like, you got to do this to get money. But then you, yeah. it's like your mom was actually in the industry doing music. Mm-hmm. How was, did she, did she ever, do you ever, ever have a conversations about her her background coming up trying to make music? She always makes that joke, and it's true, but she's like, you guys got your voice for me. And we know that, but she just likes to brag about it. So when we get on certain platforms and venues, she's like, you got that for me. I'm like, Ma, we give you all the flowers. We know. Mm. So it's like, it's crazy because the stereotype is real. That, that That's a real thing. But I'm so blessed. I have, like, you know, when you're younger, you don't really take, you, you know, you kind of take certain things for granted with parents. Like, why you always on me? Why you always talking to me? But when you get older, mm-hmm. You realize that your parents are goats. Mm-hmm. Like my mom, my dad, everyone knows you know. My parents, they they are top line supporters. If I'm going to perform right now in China, they're gonna get a flight and they're gonna hard. go. You know, they they go hard for the kid. They show love. Um, they're they're not they're not into the whole Dr. Lori stuff. They just want you to do something that makes sense. And if mm. it's making the pattern is aligning, they're gonna get a board. They all aboard, all aboard on. But it. you never talked to her about that transition for her because I'm assuming that her parents were kind of like that traditional. Mm-hmm. You want to go to this that. Or maybe not. Did you ever talk to her about it's it? It's funny because we haven't had a deep conversation about that yet, but mm-hmm. I'm actually going to have to do that because, you I, yeah, no, you're right. I need to get down. get on camera, too. I'm, that tell, be hard. I'm telling you. No, you're right. Because she probably, it probably was some barriers that she had to break first mm-hmm. generation of being in the music industry, right, mm-hmm. from the culture. Yeah. And I can only imagine because I hear from a younger perspective, but I don't, that's, I don't know how you might, but that's 30-something years yeah. later. So imagine 
30 something years prior when your mom's is trying to get trying mm-hmm. to make music and her parents are like what the mm-hmm. fuck is this like this gave me a great idea I definitely pro- need to talk to her that I shit would be to hard to her. yeah I definitely need to damn so question <laughs> your style of music right Afro mm-hmm. beat R&B vibe if you had to give me a top five Afro beats of all time what would it be top five record from Afro beats mm-hmm well, I'm biased because I grew up in the new school generation. So my my, you're my age, you're not yeah. Too, oh, I said, saying, like, no, but you know, Afrobeat's been gone for so they've been going on for so long. So it's like okay. some people probably give like a super old song, but me, I would give something that's like in the newer generation. Yeah, like, give me something that I would know because come on, okay. man, I just got hip to this shit too. Well, well, Burner Boy, Yay is one of those ones. You know, yeah, yeah, that's one of the joints that. Yeah, that's one of the joints. You would say top five. I, in this new school generation, I would say. I that, mean, that speaks yeah. value on the yeah. record, though. Yeah, literally. I would, I would say that's one of them. Um, I would say Davido. He has a record called A. No, I don't fall in this cool, but I like, I like. It's called IA. It's a record that he has How's as it well. Go? It's like ah, uh, she don't want designer. She don't want the money. Okay. Yeah. So that's one of the two. Two. I would say. Two, five, three, three. Um. So let me third third. Well, right now there's a record that's hot. I would say I would in this new school generation last last you know burner mm-hmm. you know we don't got last everybody go yeah. chop yet I would say that's one of them four um isn't hmm. it crazy how burner boy is going crazy, going crazy and he got nasty. it from the mud he got it from the mud mm. people don't you burner got it from the mud and that's why when he's popping off like this it's like he got it from the mud too just like that too so it's a blessing all right so we got burner boy mm-hmm. with two records up there mm-hmm. we got um. Uh, Davido, uh, Davido, yeah. that's three, so oh, four yeah. and five. Oh, we, yeah, Wiz Kid got some joints. Um, he just got bang. That's 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 one. That's one of the guys that's paid the lane for a lot of these guys. Um, what's one of my favorite Wiz Kid records? He's still going crazy too. He literally, literally. That um, shit is crazy. He's a yeah. cheat code. Now, literally, him and Burner Boy cheat code. <laughs> literally, <bro>. literally. <laughs> a Wiz Kid top record of mine. I can't think of one right now at the moment. Um. Uh. Yeah, it's crazy because I was yeah, he's gonna think. kill me on YouTube, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I was I was looking for a song, right? Mm-hmm. I was trying to find a song, but I didn't know the name of it, right? So I go in my my notepad and I'm like, bros, what's the name of the song? Yeah. They be like, real uh, 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 What song is uh, that? I don't know. Nigga said it was a terrible. Oh, true, true love. love. That's a great record, bro. You know it's crazy. Record. Nah, fuck that. <laughs> what's your name, bro? Bryce. Bryce. Shout out to Bryce because I <laughs> goes in. I goes in the. Uh, <laughs> And the, and the message, I'm like, yeah. yo, help me with the song. It yeah. goes like this. They bro, like, bro, that's a terrible, uh, a terrible impersonation, a soundbite of me trying to figure it out. But you see, he got it right yeah, off the buck. You, like, let me you. see, bro. Let me pull this I'll up, tell bro. You. No, he's called what is it love. called? It's called True, True Love. love. That's who, a banger. That's who does one. it? Uh, Whiskey. Whiskey. That shit is yeah. one. I, that's yeah. one of the f- most fire. Yeah, it's a good vibe. It's a good vibe. And yeah, it's, it's definitely a great so vibe. So give me your next two. You got to give me your next two. Right now, so there's a record. Uh, Colasso is one of the hot ones right now. Um, Oxlade, he's one of those. Oxlade is a singer. Uh, it's, it's Colasso, right? That's one of his records. Um, what's my fifth record? I would say. Um, I'm real biased when it comes to. Yeah, that's it. 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 That's the one right there. That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. I gotta look at my phone, man. That's the fifth record I would say right now. That's hot. That's not in your top five. That's not in my top five. It's oh not. It's not. God, I'm not gonna shit. lie to you. That's a great record though. I'm not gonna lie. But all right, so I ain't, I ain't too far off. Yeah. All right, all what's right. up? What's up? I got. I gotta say this shit. What's up? I'm, what's up? Oh, Asake is hot right now. Organized. It's called Organized. Okay, yeah. so you got you got to do it again. Top five. So Davido, mm-hmm. A, uh, Asake, Organized. Um, what else I say? I said Wiz Kid. Did I say Wiz Kid? I think. Uh, oh, Yay by Burner Boy. Uh, last, last by Burner Boy. What's my my fifth, I said. Uh, oh, one more, one more. Ah, uh, I would say. Um, what was that record? I just pulled it up. I just pulled it up. Literally. Uh. Oh, I don't, five. That's tough. Yeah, I don't listen. To, <laughs> I can't bring myself in this because I like my songs. But, um, we can go with. We can go with. We can go with a whiskey record. Um, whiskey got a lot of. I would whatever, say, whatever record it is, you got you got to do the five over though. Oh man, so we would we would say um okay the five so top from the jump I'll say um, Burner Boy last last mm-hmm. uh Burner Boy yay mm-hmm. Davido a uh, Davido a fourth Asake uh, Asake organized and then we'll go with five um five we'll go with uh, Whiskid um. 
Am I mind? Am I already necessary? What's that song? Uh, Cairo, Cairo. Looking for Cairo. Okay. Looking for. I like that song a lot. Is last last? That's, is that the song when they talking about like if I'm broken, ain't none of your business, something like that? Or is that another song? That might be another song. Finesse. 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 Finesse is a great record. That's a great record. That's a what, great record. Finesse. Yeah. What is he talking about exactly? Good question. I, 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 I think you better know. You gotta know. <laughs> I think he's just talking about, it's really just a vibe. Like, he's just talking about, like, if you just, you're broke, don't rock with me. Like, or, like, it's just a party vibe, honestly. I think it's really just a vibe. I feel like you might have copped out and your coach ain't going to fuck with you. Yo! Like, There's going to be somebody that know what the fuck you're talking about. I'm like, nah, bro. If I said it wrong, I'm sorry. He's not going to fuck with that. He put me on the spot. He put me on the spot. fuck with that, bro. Yo, what are some misconceptions of, about, like, <clears throat> Afro beats? In other types of music, like now, I don't want to. I don't want to say West Indian music because I feel like that's clearly a difference. But even now, some people get that mixed up. I don't mm-hmm. know why. But mm-hmm. what's some misconceptions of of the Afro beats music? And is it Afro beats music and African music? Is it separate? Is it is a different genres inside of the culture as well? Yo, this episode is sponsored by the Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy David Shines. Man, he's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi million dollar businesses. Right. He created the morning meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now, listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either one, outgrew the people around us or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me. This is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. So there's different sounds um, to Afrobeats. There's, there's like, you know, the, the Afino the, uh, that's popping right now, the uh, South African sounds. Um, Afrobeats, one, the thing about Afrobeats, it's been around for a long time. But what I would say, I think it's just now starting to hit the American wave. Like, mm. there's a few artists, big time artists, I think they just started, like, bringing that wave over here. But Afrobeats been here for 30, 40 plus years. So mm. I think people I think people are realizing that just now. And it's great because better late than never, like we always say. But um, I would say I would say it's just now starting to get accepted. Okay. Yeah. Who who you think had the biggest impact or influence of it being getting accepted in the states in right now it's a it's a few of them i would say whiz kid mm. i would say davido and i would say burning boy i would say those three was the the heavy the heavy guys that came here put in the work um and they made people like drake and people mm. like chris brown get on remixes so those are guys that brought, set the tone and they got those popular american guys like chris brown and drake to get on remixes so that you know everybody knows chris brown and drake on our feature it goes crazy as an artist though mm-hmm. right you know so many people try to put Drake in this category of like being a culture vulture. Yeah. Some people will look at it as he's really opening the doors for yeah. other like diverse music. Mm-hmm. How do you look at it? I look at it in both ways. I would say I think it's a great thing because people need that platform. You got somebody like Drake or like a Justin Bieber or someone like those type of guys. They get on your song, that's an automatic million plus people that's on your side that never heard of you. So mm-hmm. I don't look at it that way, and I'm I'm big on um because I do a lot of features too. I'm big on holding your own. I feel like if you feature somebody on the song, you need to hold your own. I don't care who it is. I feel like as long as you hold your own in that part, you're good. Mm-hmm. You know, you know. I just feel like you just have to really just hold your own, in yeah. my opinion. No, I think he does a great job at like yeah. just putting light to different cultures, yes. right? Speaking. Because it's it's and especially, but I feel like it's not fair for people to call him a culture vulture because if I really like something. Mm-hmm. I should be able to show you what I like because yeah. it's, it's kind of like if I if I come to you, give me the aux. Yeah. That's why some niggas can't get the aux I'm in the car. You, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, yo, I'm going to play what I like and hopefully yeah. everybody like it. Yeah. So I feel like Drake came from a culture where he probably was ex- he probably was introduced to mad different type of cultures mm-hmm. and music. Like Toronto is a, a huge place mm-hmm. right? when it comes to music and All culture. the sounds over there too. Exactly. So I feel like I think he does a great job at introducing us to, to new yeah, things, man. Yeah, because you need it. It's, any artist, they, they, they're a liar. They say, no, if Drake call you right now, and he say you want to get on the song, you're going to get on. It doesn't matter if you're Drake's biggest hater. You're going to make, you're going to clear your open verse and let Drake do whatever he do on that song because you know the streams, royalty, everything is going to go crazy. Mm-hmm. Life is going to be good for you, mm-hmm. you know? Yo, you about to do, uh, is it Afrochella? Afrochella, yes. I said it right. All right, so Afrochella. 
Matter of fact, not even Afro Cello. Let's not get that. You doing a, you headlining something? Yes. Sir. Back home. Union stage in DC. Union stage. Yes, sir. How do you prepare for that? I think it's. I'm big on obviously prayer, of course, but I'm big on the rehearsals. I mm. feel like you have to not only those those professional rehearsals. You know, you're in the venue doing your thing. But I'm talking more like you got to be like your your big your own biggest fan. Like you got to be in the mirror mm. singing, doing what you need to do. So I really think. I'm big on just really understanding that I have to practice. I can't just go out there and freestyle it, you know, because the bigger you grow, the bigger eyes you get on you. So I think I'm big on just running regular practices, of course, but just really just mirror, mirror, because what you practice in the mirror is most likely what you're going to do on that stage. So I'm really big on that, man. I'm really, really big on that. I think repetition is definitely yeah. key too, right? I feel yeah. like, I mean, you know, it's like with anything. Like if yeah. you re repeat it over and over again, like practice makes permanent. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It don't make perfect, but it makes permanent. permanent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, like that. And definitely progress, right? Yeah. Practice make progress as well. So like as long as you keep practice and even if you fall short of your expectation, mm -hmm. it's gonna be great. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Only you gonna see the mistakes. Yes, sir. Damn, I can rap. We can yeah, yeah, I like it's a bar. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a bar. You know what I'm saying? Like, throw me on the feature, that's bro. That's a bar, it's literally, like, literally, literally. J Hill, J Otto. J Hill, I like that. <laughs> Yo, so like how do you you working all the time, right? You come yeah. to the A, doing mad. Things, video shoots, interviews, mm -hmm. you name it, right? Yeah. But like you said, you got family at, at the crib. Mm -hmm. uh, and we come from like the same background when it comes yeah. to that, that blended family style. Yeah. How are you dealing with, I came to, like we can't have a conversation, just like, you know, yeah. so, but be prepared. Yeah. How are you dealing with the lack of time and the emotions that come behind it mm. from the family? That's 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 a great question. Um. I think even just even talking about it, you know, I've talked about it some few interviews with her well, about her too. So I think that you know, B when I was going so hard from two thousand nineteen to two thousand twenty, we ended up actually breaking up around that time, you know. Mm. So I think that was my reality check. Like, all right, Jeff, I know you're going hard with the passion, but you need to take care of home too. So I would say that breakup was the best makeup I ever needed because it was a thing where it's like, okay. You can't just be so hard on your passion, forgetting that you have this phenomenal woman that has held you down. When you came back, even before you, when you're on your hiatus and you came back, she's been holding it down. So you can't just neglect that. So I think that breakup that we had was the best for me. How long was the breakup? Like five, six months. Damn. Five, six months. And and I don't care what no one says. When you talk, when you have a best friend that you talk to every day, and they gone. Real men, you gonna shed some tears. Hell you know, yeah. you gonna shed some real tears. Yeah, give you know, me two weeks. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you. About. I'm telling you. There's a lot of guys. Well, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. Of course, I'll tell my guys that I'm good. But they, the ones that really know me, they know. Hey, bro, what's going on? Let's check on me. You know, things like Nigga, that. Nigga, a so. week and a half. I'm, I'm <laughs> crying. I'm hurt. I'm mad. Matter of <laughs> fact, I ain't gonna lie to you. You know, it's crazy. Now that I'm older, I probably cry more. But when I yeah. was younger, yeah, that would happen. And you know what I would do? Mm -hmm. Fuck mad bitches. I'm, that, that's I'm just being real. And. You know, you know, and you know the crazy thing about it. I think as men, we're scared of facing that it. mirror, man. Talk we're scared it. of looking, waking up. That's you and I. So we we do a lot of we do a lot of. All right, let me see who the we're next girl's gonna the be. Pain. Yep, and then and then you know what makes the one happens. You bring that girl along, you break her heart. So you you just broke five hearts. Mm -hmm. You probably could have been cool with them. They could have been cool. They could have showed you different sides of you, helped you out, got you to certain things. But what you did, you used your flesh, and now. Look, you ruined five girls off of your pain. Well, you, you know what just, else you did? Because you went to therapy. You know what else you did? Yeah. You dig in a deeper hole, right? Oh, man. And what it's, what it's doing is, okay, that's that's karma. Boom, that's mm -hmm. more karma. Mm -hmm. Boom, that's more karma. Like, damn, like, we got to relax. Because that shit, going, what goes around, comes I'm around some type of way. And men are men are big on that. Men, are, men don't like looking themselves in the mirror. And I feel like, man, we got to get out that habit where it's like we can't talk to our guys about certain stuff. It's okay. Like, it's okay to cry to your man. It's okay to hey, your bro. It's okay to, hey, I'm not good right now, bro. Like, I'm not okay, but I will be okay. Or can you help me be okay? We're so cool when it's time to turn up, birthday party, pull up. That's my bro. But are you really my bro when it's dark, you man, know? You know what else we need to yeah. be okay with? Yeah. Telling a the motherfucker they did wrong. Telling right? you. Like, yo, bro, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, I know you think you lit right now. You're getting all these hoes. Yeah. But I think it's, it's something deeper than that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think it's, you know what I'm saying? I think you should check that out. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times we get this ego and this pride thing going and we think we think the measurement of how many chicks we got is the measurement of, mm. of, of how big our ego is yeah. or how, how lit of a man we are. And yep. it's the opposite. Literally the opposite. Right? It's, it's like, bro, 
you doing you getting all these chicks and sleeping with all these yeah. women is really just showing your insecurity. Mm -hmm. Right? Because you can't even, like you said, fix yourself in the mirror. Can't. You can't. Man, <laughs> we could talk some shit, bro. <laughs> I'm telling you. I think for me, for me, like for the time shit, I don't know, man. Um I don't know. I, I think it's just it's just it's, it gets sticky. Yeah. That's why I, I ask you because I'm like, man, you working? Yeah. So how are you intentionally making that time? Like, what so, are some things you're doing intentionally? Teach me, help me. Out. Man, date nights are important. Um, flowers here and there, once a month, two, twice a month. Whatever you want to do is important. Mm -hmm. Asking her, you know, do check ins. We do check ins. We're big on that. Like every end of the month, she's. Uh, we have real conversations, what mm. I could do better, what she could do better, what we're doing good, what we're doing bad. So I think having those transparent conversations help a lot, too, because, I mean, it's a relationship. You know, ups and downs, ups and downs, you know. And my thing is I'm big on um, keeping her in communication, letting her know this is so-and-so, this is what we're doing today. She's in my shared calendar for my mm. management. Like, she gets the alert. When I get a, a booking or whatever was going on, she sees it. If I got a studio session, she sees it. So she's in the loop. I make And what I messed up at first, I assumed, when I first started, got where I assumed uh, in 2019, I was like, I didn't think you cared about that. She's like, did you ever ask me? Mm. Never asked. I just assumed that you don't care about, you know, I'm going to the studio. I didn't feel like I needed to just tell you. But I think... When I realized after the breakup, like I said, I, a lot of things opened up, and I was like, "Damn, that was a hard five months." You know, mm. obviously you wouldn't know. I mean, nobody would probably knew I was I wasn't okay. But at the same time, I was like, "I'm gonna be okay." Mm. You know, and if if we get back together, we do. If we don't, we don't. But I understood like that was the greatest breakup ever because I understood that, oh, this if I say I want this person for the rest of my life, I need to show it. So, mm. like I said, date nights, um, just keeping her feeling special, like like they always say. You date them once, you got to date them forever. Mm. Everything you did to get them, that's what you got to do to keep them. Facts. That's what you got to do to keep them. You know, sure, it ain't sure. no, let me go hard for two years, and then once she gets this and that, I can just take a break. Nah. Or even being able to to um, maneuver, yeah. right? Like, even, like, in the music industry, yeah. right? The, th the, the music that you made when you first started, you can't make that same music. Tell you. You got to be able to adjust with the time, right? Yeah. Adapt with the time. Because if you don't adapt, you're going to get lost, right? Yeah. I feel like it's kind of similar in a relationship because... Yeah. Sometimes you can't do the same things you did to, to get them to keep them because what happened is over time, I mean, it's been like, I think you've been with your lady for like eight years. Yeah, we got together in 2015 in uh, right. September, yep. That's a long time, yeah. right? So me, I think it's been like five years, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But sometimes the things you did to, to get them, mm -hmm. to get their attention, they start not to like that. Tell you, you got to switch it up. Literally right, you so now you got to like, damn, I got to <laughs> learn how to... <laughs> Cause they they're growing every day. Really you. Exactly <laughs> yeah. right. Like well, sometimes that shit. You know, it's crazy because like we think, like we talk about this flesh. Yeah. We attracted by the flesh. Mm -hmm. We think we like something, and then we get it, and it be the same thing we hit it for, right? Tell you. It's like my girl probably like me because like I used to host parties all the time, yeah. right? She think, oh my god, he's so he's lit. dope. <laughs> he's you know lit. what I'm saying? Like he's so uh, popular. He he, yeah. he 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 can keep the crowd going, and we get together, and you see, I still got to host parties all the yeah. time, and now you hate it because <laughs> tell you. the same the reason they love you be the same reason they hate mm -hmm. you. It's like I'm yeah, like I, yeah, I got to host parties all the time, I'm so to get paid. So know? guess what? Just like I. You probably saw me in your face smiling. Yeah. I got a host party. I got to smile at them, too. You get what I'm and saying? Oh, so, you flirt with them. No, I'm being nice. I'm I have working. to. Like, it's like I was working I, when I met you. I can't just be an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I was doing, I, I was the same person. But yeah. Now, you got to grow with time. It's yeah. crazy, man. That's, that shit is fire, yeah, man. man. Damn, man. So <laughs> like, what are some of the, um, who are some of the people you're trying to work with now? Well, you know, it's crazy because I used to be quick on um, saying big names and things like that, but I'm at a point where it's like I'm working with those that are working with me. I don't care if you got 600 followers, 6,000 followers, and one thing is I'm I, it's true. So I would love to work with these big names, but I'm not at that point where it's like I'm not chasing them no more. I'm making my own grind. I'm making my own wave. I got my own following. And my thing is the same people that I wanted to work with, those big-time people, I'm going to be in those same rooms with y'all real soon. Mm. And you know what they say? Them idols become them rivals, man. Mm -hmm. And the hunt, the hunt get hunted, you know? Mm. So it's like I'm I'm just really working with those that's working with me. I'm working with people that make sense, that really generally want to be there for me. Because like we were talking about earlier, it's it's easy. When you're hot, your phone is ringing. You know, mm. let's get a feature. Let's do this. But I feel like I'm just going to work with those that's working with me. Uh, be, keep building. It's a lot of talent out here, man. I swear it is, man. So I would love to drop them big names, but right now I'm just like I'm just moving how God has it moving, you know. Honestly, I think um, Issa Rae said it one time, mm -hmm. right? 
you got to work parallel, right, mm-hmm. side by side. A lot of times we're trying to work up, and we skip over the people that's right next to us because yeah. they be the ones that blow too, right? And it's crazy because, like, I intentionally, what I say right before, sometimes when I get in these spells, I force myself to do the opposite. Mm-hmm. Like, so, like, I've been doing these big-time interviews. And, of course, I could be like, nah, I just want to do all big-time interviews. Yeah. But it's like... I ain't there yet. Yeah. So let me not ignore these calls because, you know what I'm saying, that shit can stop. And if that shit stop and this shit stop, you're done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I think some people call it humble. Like, nah, I ain't being humble, honestly. I'm just, I'm still working the same Mm -hmm. as if I was five years Mm -hmm. ago. You know, I ain't just, I ain't letting nothing change. It's crazy because, um, do you ever think about when your big break hit, what you will do? What I'll do? Mm Mm-hmm. So when I like, and what is that big break? Before you even say what you will do, what is that big break first? I just, I just think signing a a, a deal, a life changing deal that makes sense for everybody. What like, is that? Um, honestly, you gotta what I, see it. Yeah, power gotta, words. Like right? you just said, the goal right now, two thousand twenty three, just getting a distribution deal that makes sense for the grind. Like I really want to be independent, so I want a distribute distribution deal that makes sense that can take care. of my family, of course, my direct family, and just letting my my people that's been there for me for day one. I want to get on tour, all mm-hmm. of that stuff. Like, I just want stuff to make sense, you know. And like you just said, I talked earlier, power of the tongue. I want to be on tour in 2023. I want to get a big deal that makes sense for my career, you know, financially, spiritually, mentally, physically, everything that makes sense, you know. I just want to be happy because, like, you know, the injury industry is tricky, mm-hmm. you know. You know, it's hot. One day you're hot, one day you're cold, you know. So it's kind of like, I want things that make sense that's going to take care of me, take care of my people, my direct family, and we're well on the way. Mm-hmm. I really, that's how I, that's how I see that big break. Like, just calling my boy, hey, bro, we're going to Miami for the day. Hey, bro, we're going to, we just got a call to be in uh, Zimbabwe for the day. Y'all, y'all got y'all, you know, we on the way. So, it's just getting those life-changing calls that, I think those stuff that makes sense the most. You could tell you from, like, somewhere else, because like, yeah. I, I would have never even thought of to say nothing like Zimbabwe. <laughs> I'm I telling you. I would never even thought of that. Like, I'm who, telling you. Like, where the fuck is that? That's the way you want to go or something? Like, I would never even thought about that. Like, where the fuck is that at? I'm telling you. Where is that? Africa. Oh, shit. Africa. <laughs> Africa, man. Yeah. Clearly. Yeah, you literally. I, I would have never thought of that. Clearly is in literally, Africa. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Shit, that shit next to Wakanda. But. I'm telling you. <laughs> but are you... Are you ready for that though? I'm right ready, now. man. I'm ready. If, if somebody calls you say, I want you to go on tour, are you ready for it? I'm ready. I'm ready. Like I put in the grind, the effort. I've been literally been going against the odds. You know, a lot of people. It's so funny because you know, pretty sure you can relate. When you first start, there's a lot of non-believers, but those mm-hmm. non-believers they like spending that block. They like they like tables turn. You mm-hmm. know, so I'm ready, man. I feel like I put in so much grind, so much effort to my craft. It's like. I'm hungry. Like, I'm not thirsty. It's a big difference. A lot of people are hungry. They, a lot of people are thirsty. They say whatever, do whatever, get in the mm. rooms. I'm not thirsty. I'm hungry. Because I know, like I said, I know this is God on date. I know God is going to make a way here. So I'm so hungry to the point where it's like, they're going to be like, oh, you know, everyone knows your Instagram, all your stats, everything is your resume. So they're going to be like, oh, he's been grinding from here. He grew from here, grew from there. He's ready. Mm. He's ready. So I know when that call comes, no questions asked. Mm. That's going to, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to take over the world, man. Ready. Might be young, but you ready. I'm ready. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Yo, uh, what are some things that uh, we should look out for uh, on the way, man? So I just finished my album. Not, I finished my EP. So um, I f- did an album this year called J Auto Memoirs, dropped in 2022. Mm-hmm. I finished my EP. Um, so I'm dropping that definitely in 2023. And um, a lot of shows, a lot of music videos on the way. Got a lot of content loading, ready to just. There's a J Auto storm coming. There's a big storm coming, and you know when them storms come, they don't stop. So mm. I am literally have a lot of stuff that's loaded up, music stuff, events, shows, music videos, a lot of things on the way, man. Like 2023, if you don't know me now, you're going to find out really soon. Is that the camera mm. right there, Jay? That's you right if there. If you don't know me now, you're going to find out real soon. Mark mm. my words. Let's get it. Let them know how to follow you and anything. So all platforms, J Auto three oh one, J A D D O three zero one on Instagram, same thing on Twitter, J dot A D D O on all platforms, my music, and we're gonna go crazy. Great talking to you, yeah. man. It was it was man. informative, fun. Uh I definitely you got my support. Yes, Anything sir. I could help, you know what I'm saying? Just let me know. Feelings mutual, brother. My God, J Auto is here. You already know J Hill Podcast. Mr. J Hill is a rap. We out. Yes, sir.